Bonjour, Paradise Panther artists. My name is Mrs. Telfer, and I'm excited to be with you today to introduce you to our next master artist, Henri de Toulouse Lautrec. He became very well known for blurring the lines between fine art and advertising. And some of his most famous works are posters, which is very different than any other artist we have studied. So let's travel back over 100 years to the city of Paris, France. Here we go, artists. I want you to imagine you are in Paris, France in the year 1891. The city is just awakening to a misty Paris morning. You glance out your window and spot something posted on a wall, blazing with color. It has big black lettering, along with the colorful picture, so you decide it must be a poster. You're not the only one who has spotted it because a crowd quickly gathers around the poster. People crowd around to get a closer look, chatting with each other, astonished at what they see. So let's take a look just like the Parisians did. Among the crowd is a young Paris street child who understands at once what is on the poster. He recognizes the dancer, Lagoulou and Valentine, without being able to even read their names. Grinning, he explains to the crowd who they are by imitating the dancing performers in the poster. Now that he has everyone's attention, the child traces with his finger the signature of the artist who made the poster, Lautrec. That name, Lautrec, is seen again and again all over the city on copies of the poster. His name will soon become familiar to the people of Paris. Words are not necessary to understand the poster. Even the street child can see clearly what it advertises. The woman's swirling petticoats light up the poster. The huge figure of the man, Valentine, decorates the picture with his dark form in the foreground. Finally, the crowd starts to drift off, still excitedly talking about the poster, the artist, and their anticipation of seeing the dancers perform. A poster is a great form of advertising. Now, let's look at the man in the foreground. foreground. We can see his two hands. His hands are not pointing in the same direction. Look here and see how one hand is pointing up vertically. Then we see his other hand by his hip is going horizontally or side to side. Go ahead and see if you can use your hands to imitate this form. Show one hand pointing up to the sky vertically and point the other hand horizontally at your side. That's great. Lautrec expertly used line to make you interested in his posters and his paintings, as well as to show that the woman and the man in this poster were not dancing the same way. Now I would like to introduce the artist who created this poster. His whole name is Henri de Toulouse Lautrec. Now, I want to see if you can find Toulouse Lautrec in this painting. He painted himself here with his very tall cousin in the background of this painting. Do you think you can find him? I will give you a clue. He was very, very short. Now raise your hand and your teacher will call on you if you think you can find him. Here we see 
Toulouse-Lautrec walking right next to his very tall cousin. They are both in the background of this painting. Great job, artists. Some people like to measure themselves against a wall as they are growing up. Toulouse-Lautrec would stand as tall as he could, but the line that marked his height climbed very, very slowly. Soon, those his age were towering over him. The doctors agreed that his bones were not growing properly. It was before the time of x-rays, so they didn't know what was wrong. At about the age of 13, he had an accident and broke the thigh bone in his leg. It was six months before he walked again. And then a terrible thing happened. Six months later, he broke his other leg. His wealthy family called in expert doctors, but they were not sure that he would ever walk again. During his recovery, he drew and sketched, and his parents could tell from his excellent drawings that he had a talent for art. His doctors tried everything, and Henri eventually walked again, but his legs were never the same. His final height as a man was barely five feet tall. He had to use a cane to walk, but even though he physically didn't grow very tall, his drawing talents did, as you can see in this sketch. And because his parents were wealthy, he had many advantages that helped to develop his artistic talents. Here is a trick photograph taken of Lautrec in his studio. Two different photos were put together as one. He had a good sense of humor. He enjoyed dressing up in costumes for photographs or in doing trick photography, as you see here. Because of his physical appearance, he was always prepared for the stares and laughter of people seeing him for the first time. He tried to laugh at himself first, but that is hard to do, and it made him feel unhappy. By the age of 17, he knew what he wanted to do. His dream was to go to the art center of the world, Paris, France, and study art. You will see today that he sketched and painted the places where he spent his time. He felt at home at the theaters, the dance halls, restaurants, and nightclubs, like the famous Moulin Rouge, which means red windmill. Let's go to his favorite places and meet his unusual friends who he painted and made famous. But first, let's catch a glimpse of Lautrec at work on a painting in his studio. When Lautrec moved to Paris to become an artist, his family gave him a large allowance. He was able to spend his nights sketching at the clubs and dance halls of Paris, and his days painting in his studio as you see here. He never had to worry about paying the bills as many other artists did. His wealthy family allowed him a lot of freedom to do as he pleased. Now, let's meet a friend of Lautrec's through a poster he did for him. This man owned a small nightclub and business was slow. So he asked Lautrec to design this poster to advertise his club. Look carefully at this poster and tell me, what do you think this man was like? Does he look shy and quiet or loud and bold? Go ahead and raise your hand and your teacher will call on you if you have an idea. To me, this man looks loud and bold. 
Lautrec showed the man's personality in this poster through the loud, bold colors we see here, red, yellow, and black. We also see the man's size in the poster, the expression on his face, his clothing, and how he is holding a stick in his hand that makes him look strong. Also, notice how the lettering that is bold suits the personality of the man. Delicate, fine lettering would not have fit with this poster. The bold colors and bold lettering made the poster noticed on busy Paris streets. Lautrec made a simple design here with colors that catch your attention. We can see the colors black, red, and yellow. These were Lautrec's colors that he used time and time again. There is not a lot of detail shown here. The detail was not important, but the line and the colors were. Let's meet another friend of Lautrec's through his painting, and let's see if she will be loud and bold too. This woman's name was May Belfort. We can see that her personality is very different than the man we saw before. Here, she looks timid, shy, afraid, and quiet. Lautrec showed this in his artwork through her size, the expression on her face, the kitten she is holding in her hands, as well as her dress. May was a singer who would come on stage wearing little girl dresses and holding a black kitten. She would sing in baby talk and the people in the audience loved her. Now, let's catch a glimpse of the most popular dance in Paris. Let's listen and try to picture the dance. The name of the dance shown here is the can-can. See how the dancers here look like they are moving? Notice the kind of lines Lautrec used to make them look graceful and fast. We can see swirling, nervous, thick and thin lines. The curved lines show movement. Now look at how Lautrec outlines his dancers. I bet you sometimes use outlining when you color. Outlining is a way to draw attention to the shapes and to separate different figures. 
Go ahead and raise your hand if you have heard of the word calligraphy. Great, you can put your hands down now. Calligraphy is a form of beautiful writing. Picture in your mind beautiful calligraphy with thick and thin lines. It has swirls and looks very delicate and graceful on paper. Lautrec took those same kind of lines and used them in his artwork. They are called calligraphic dancing lines, like you see here. They are lines that are swirling, twirling, and whirling to match the movement of the dancers and their ruffled costumes. Sometimes Toulouse Lautrec would use the camera to capture a pose instead of sketching. Here is a photograph of another big celebrity in the French entertainment world, Jane Avril. Lautrec used the same high kicking pose in his poster, but let's notice her face in both. It is not the same. Toulouse Lautrec was not interested in copying facial features exactly in his artwork. A photo can do that. He was more concerned with line, color, and design. And most important of all, capturing your attention. That is what advertising is all about. Here, we can see calligraphic lines in this poster, in the woman's skirt. Here are the calligraphic lines in her skirt. Look at how the lines aren't really connected to each other. See how they flow and how quick they look. They also look nervous. The art word to describe these kinds of lines is calligraphic. Right here. You will be painting calligraphic lines in your classrooms during our art lesson. Now that you have seen a few of Lautrec's posters and paintings, we can see that Lautrec painted people as he saw them. To him, there was no ugliness. Go ahead and listen to his words. He said, always and everywhere, ugliness has its good side. It's exciting to discover it where no one else has noticed it before. To think he may have felt this way because of his own physical appearance. His posters became so popular that many Parisians started to collect them. They would take them off buildings and signs before they were replaced with new posters. Unfortunately, Lautrec's time spent in the nightclubs and his way of life began to have a bad effect on him. His friends began to notice there was dust on his easel and he wasn't working. He was afraid to be alone and started imagining things. He seemed confused and flew into a rage over little things. His family became very worried about him and doctors advised treatment. He painted while at the clinic and did get better, but not for long. When he returned in Paris, he went back to his old ways and he died at the very young age of 37. The world lost a very talented artist and no one would ever paint Paris quite the same way again. But we have his wonderful posters and paintings to enjoy today. Now we are going to review some of the important vocabulary words using the letters in Lautrec's name. See if you can guess the words along with me. 
The first letter in his name is L. Lautrec used wavy, flowing lines in his posters. L is for lines. The next letter is A. Because of his great talent and lasting popularity, we call Lautrec a master artist. A is for artist. The next letter is U. Toulouse Lautrec felt very unhappy when people stared at him and laughed at the way he looked. U is for unhappy. The next letter is T. Lautrec broke both his legs and never grew to be very tall. T is for tall. The next letter is R. A color he used a lot in his work was red. The next letter is E. Paris thought his posters were excellent and he was in great demand. E is for excellent. And the last letter is C. The type of flowing, easy lines Lautrec used are called calligraphic. C is for calligraphic. Great job, artists. Great job listening and remembering all that we have learned about our French artist, Henri de Toulouse Lautrec. I am very impressed. And as a French person might say, ooh la la. Go ahead, try it with me. Ooh la la. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you next time, artists. Au revoir.